We begin, though, with that warning from Fitch, the firm saying it may be forced to downgrade dozens of banks, big ones, including J.P. Morgan Chase. This comes after recently downgrading the United States credit rating. For market reaction, let's bring in Doug Butler, senior vice president, and director of research at Rockland Trust. What, what, what has got Fitchy feeling so well? I could rhyme, but I won't. <laughs> well, I, I'll, I'll also not go there. But again, Fitch downgrading the banks sort of is very corollary to what they just did with the U.S. government. It's really if they're really negative on the government. And they're taking this as a broad swap. They're saying the banking industry as a whole has greater problems in it, which is why they would hit J.P. Morgan Chase and all of the rest of, and every bank down the line. So essentially, every bank from you know large regionals all the way up to J.P. Morgan would get hit with this. And that's that's one of the reasons why it spooked the markets a bit, feeling like that this is a problem. But again, the issues facing the banks, the commercial real estate problem, high rates, high deposit payments, those are things that the concerns have already been baked in. So I do feel Fitch is a little late to the party, but you know, the market sentiment today is, well, if there's any additional challenges, then it's going to be a problem. I suppose you could say, you could argue that if, if you're going to downgrade the U.S. government debt, therefore you need to downgrade everything else that is lower on the credit scale, be, just by almost definitionally. But, but I guess the key question for investors is, do you feel, do you personally feel that the banks that we're talking about here, some of the big ones, uh, are in any sense um, on sand as opposed to s concrete and cement? Should we be worried about them? Oh, I, I don't think you should be worried at all about the, the biggest. And I actually think almost uh, there's very few banks out there that are on shaky ground. The, the banks that went under were on pretty shaky ground, and then that, you know, they swimming naked, so to speak. Um, there are probably, there's probably another couple of banks out there that will get hit, that will run into some problems that may have to be sort of forced into a merger or something like that over the next year, mm -hmm. especially if things take a dramatic downturn. But yeah, do I feel like J.P. Morgan, Bank America, Wells Fargo, the biggest banks are at great peril? No. And I, I don't even think Fitch thinks they're there. It's just they're downgrading everything because they're, they, they're making a case that financials are, as a whole, mm -hmm. greater risk. And I think it's tied into that U.S. government call, which right. makes the government call a tough thing to make. So if that's true, Doug, and these banks are selling off today and you don't, you're not worried about them, you don't really think that they're standing on sand, is there opportunity here to pick up some shares of J.P. Morgan on sale? Uh, well, we, we were slightly, oh, we we're already, we we're owners of J.P. Morgan. We're slightly overweight where our targets are to begin with, so we're not, we're not adding to it today. Um, so we're not, we're not diving in with both feet. Um, but if we do think there are definitely going to be opportunities that you know that you'll see in the bank sector over the coming six months we probably we're we err on the side of being cautious about entering the bank space until you have greater clarity on how hard the recession is going to be um, we've seen a lot of recovery since those you know those march draw uh, february march drawdowns so you get uh, you're talking about uh, you're talking about how the economy is going to land. It would seem that the, that banking problems aren't going to be the the precipitating event that either causes a recession or hardens up what otherwise might be a soft-ish kind of recession. But the real concern here would be consumers and consumer habits. Yeah, I think that's that's our big concern. It's why we sort of feel that you know today's market drop is a bit of a blip in the marketplace versus a long-term trend. Um, because again, you're seeing the strong consumer, and I I think most rallies continue until the consumer cries uncle. But the consumer cries uncle if yeah. they start losing jobs. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think back tax. to the last the the Great Recession in 2007-08, and that was yeah. driven by a banking crisis. <laughs> Uh, if, right. if there's a recession this time around, my sense is it's not going to be driven by a banking crisis. No, I mean, you know, they're, they're never like the last one. We always, you know, we'll, we'll always win the last war. But I think for where we stand, we think that there's still, look, the economy still seems like it's going along pretty well. We now 
who knows what's going to happen with student loan start getting repaid and all of that starts happening again people are starting to get mm -hmm. decidedly more squeezed on their interest payments and you're seeing credit card bills tick up but again you know we we think that there's ample opportunities out there in the market especially if you're you know really focused right. on I'm staying ahead of the game Doug we thank you for your time today as always good to see you sir sure. Doug Butler thanks a time you bet